Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and in this one I regret to inform you that Blender is broken. That's right, let's get this on the main screen, it's super sad. Uh, Blender is broken, however, I'm going to show you how to fix it, and let's talk about why it's broken, and how you already knew this, but just didn't realize that it was already broken. So let's get OBS out of here. Uh, so you don't know how to record these things. Uh, yes, Blender has been broken for a very long time, and most people haven't uh, been able to fix this, even though the solution's been floating around there on the internet. And of course, I'm talking about the wireframe node. And this is a node that lets you kind of see the wireframe of your object in shading, right? You you basically just add a wireframe, type it in, it's one of the default nodes, and it lets you control the thickness, and you could even make it pixel size, even though I don't know why why you would use that. Uh, you have this node, it's great. However, it has one major, major flaw. What are those diagonals doing there? I, I didn't want to triangulate my mesh, right? Um, this has been something that it has annoyed people for a very long time. You have this great wireframe node, but for some reason it doesn't give you the feature you want. You want the quads, not the uh, tries. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a custom node that lets you actually handle this. So here's the custom node. Um, it gets rid of the diagonals and you can control the thickness. So really it's just uh, the wireframe node, but not messed up. It works with Eevee. It works with Cycles. I mean, Workbench doesn't even use shading, but if it did, it would work with uh, Workbench as well. It'd work with Corona. It'd work with uh, Arnold. Corona Render is not a, a good name nowadays. They should uh, change that. But uh, either way, um, yes, so I'm going to show you how to do this in shading, which is important because it lets you do different shading effects like rough and edges, and you can mix it together with a bunch of different nodes. And, you know, this is important because you wouldn't want to use something like Freestyle. Freestyle does show wireframe, but it doesn't let you integrate with other nodes. And what some people do, and this is just stupid, is they duplicate their mesh, throw on a wireframe modifier, make it thick, and then they use this for their wireframe. This is next level stupid. So now, now that I have introduced this, I guess, let's make it full screen, and let me show you the, the magic of how to do this. So here we have the uh, default Blender scene. This is what your Blender should look like if you're updated and you don't have a different startup scene, in which case you already know what you're doing if you have a default startup scene. Okay, cool. So um, you might think that the first thing we want to do is maybe take this mesh, go into shading, and do a bunch of node stuff. No. Um, in fact, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to UV editing, which might be a bit of a shock for people. So the reason we're going to UV editing is the idea behind this wireframe node that we're going to make is to get the wireframe to find this information. What we need is to know where each of these faces are. Once we know where each face is, we can kind of scale it down and then everything left around in the border. So we scaled it down and there's still that border that's now been left out. That is going to be the wireframe. So if we can somehow detect where the faces are, we're going to be good to go. Well, what's the easiest way to detect where faces are? It's using a UV mapping. That's why we're in UV editing. By default, our cube has this UV map. It's a nice cross. Of course, you know that you can um, alter this in many different ways, but we want to know where each face is in a very easy to track way where not each face is in a different part of the cross. We don't want this. And it gets even more complicated with uh, more geometry, right? So we need an easy method, and that is going to be taking each face and making it the size of our like entire window. Now we could either, you know, do it one by one and try to do this accurately, move, scale, move, scale, or the easiest way to do this as I'm in object mode right now, so I'm kind of affecting all the faces. Uh, you're going to go to UV maps with your object selected, get rid of the UV map. So right now there is no UV map and you're just going to add one back in. So now we have added a new one and by default, it actually has every single face as the entire thing uh, because we haven't given it instructions. So it's like by default, just do this. And that's actually pretty nice because that's exactly what we want. We don't need to do any transforms. So now we have a UV map that basically tells us where every face is because they're all in the same place in a UV space, okay? So now let's go to shading and do the magic. Okay, so again, this works with Eevee, works with cycles, it works with any geometry. So, so far, all we've done, um, UV maps, we've uh, subtracted one, added one, no matter what, it's going to be the default one when we add a new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up the texture coordinates, right? So just add a texture coordinates, and we are not interested in generated, no. Not in normal, but in UV. And you can see that in this case, since we created our new UV map, every single face is essentially the same. 
minus a bit of orientation, right? You can see it's kind of like the same thing's been copied onto every single face. And if we kind of, you know, add new geometry, it's not necessarily going to update. Like you see that this is kind of incorrect, but whenever you update your geometry, just do it again. And now we have the same thing again. Okay, so we now have our UV coordinates and we just want to do a manipulation that is scale down our faces like I talked about. And then just look at the uh, whatever's left over. And that's our wireframe. To do this, we're going to separate by XYZ. This is so much theory into something so simple, but you're really going to understand it. Uh, so now we have our coordinates with X and Y. Z, it doesn't really exist. It's all zero because UV is two-dimensional. Um, so we have X and Y. And to scale down our faces, we're basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take X and just shrink it. We're going to take Y and shrink it and look at where both of those uh, rules apply. That's it. So first of all, how do we shrink X? It used to be a lot more complicated, but nowadays you just add a math node. Assuming you're in 2.82 or higher, uh, you just add a math node, set it to compare. And we're going to compare it to 0.5 with an epsilon of, you know, some number. This is really your thickness. And you can see it gives us this kind of weird pattern. Don't worry about it. But you can see that it, it's at least starting to kind of look like a wireframe. So you can tell that it's kind of working. And if you don't understand what this whole compare thing is, don't worry about it. Uh, what it is, is it's shrinking Rx. That's all you care about. Okay, now we're going to duplicate this and do the same thing for the Y. And when you view this, it's kind of going the other direction. So we have one direction, the other direction. And if we add a value node, and connect it to both of our epsilons, we can have the same value uh, being pumped into here and here. So let's make this a bit smaller. Okay. So now we have X, Y, cool. How do we combine this shrinking to make a universal shrinking of the faces, not just an X and Y, but both horizontally and vertically? Well, this is kind of an age old trick where what you do is you add another math node and we're just going to multiply these, which kind of means and this and this. That's what multiplication does. So we're just going to kind of combine these two rules together. And what, 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 what happened? Let's get this on full screen. What happened? It seemed to um, have already worked. I need to stop this full screen nonsense. Um, yeah, this is basically the setup of uh, this value node. Uh, that I talked about, these two epsilons, is basically going to be the thickness. And you might be thinking, okay, this is good, but maybe it looks a bit inverted. You want the uh, center of the face to be black and the wireframe itself to be white. Easy. Um, you can either manipulate some of the math here or just add a invert node to invert it. And there you go. Again, this is what a wireframe node will look like. Here's what wireframe looks like. Same thing, but it has, um, wow, that was a horrible voice crack has those diagonals, which we do not want. Um, this uh, version is much better. Let's view that. And again, uh, one thing I want to make perfectly, perfectly clear is while this works exactly like the wireframe node, one thing it doesn't do, let me just add that back in. Um, one thing you're going to notice about the wireframe node is it's kind of more procedural in some sense. Like if we um, extrude, it's going to, you know, update our wireframe to include that information. However, if we uh, switch to our custom, it's not actually going to have the wireframe for our new extrusions. Again, you just got to reset the UV map for that. So that's, uh, there might be a way to do it in shading that doesn't require this, but it might be too complicated, honestly. And uh, again, all this is a material, so we can do more to it. And because it's a material, um, all you have to do is just, if you want to do it to a different geometry like this monkey, uh, you apply this material. It's not working. You ask yourself why. You remember the UV map, you just need to reset it. And there you go, you have a very nice wireframe that you can control the uh, thickness of. Um, let's make this a bit cleaner. Uh, for example, you're gonna notice that this uh, value, this value is kind of like the opposite of what you think. You make this a very small number and it makes your wire wireframe big. And you make this number big and it makes your wireframe small. It's kind of like inverted. Uh, to fix that, all you have to do is add another math node. We're gonna set this to subtract. And we're going to take 0.5 and subtract uh, this number. Uh, this way, if we have a very small number, it's a very small wireframe. Big number, big wireframe. Next thing is how do we get it compact uh, like this wireframe node, right? We don't want this whole network. To do this, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Uh, all we need to do is just uh, we need to highlight our whole node network, control G to group. And we want to have control over this number. Uh, this is the value. Remember, this is the thickness. So we just hook that up. 
And now when we exit this, you're going to see that our node group has this uh, slider that we just added. Oh, and by the way, we also need to set an output. So uh, this inversion, the final thing in our chain, make this the output, of course. And now we can uh, connect the output to the surface. And we can control the uh, thickness using this value. And it's basically the same thing as a wireframe, but in some sense a lot better. And if you have both of these nodes, you can actually create some cool effects because uh, the only difference between these two, assuming they have the same thickness, is that diagonal. So if we just use a value to give it the same thickness, let's make that like 0.1 or something, and we can subtract these from each other, you can create... Oh, I'm messing this up. There we go. You can create some very, very cool effects because, again, the only difference between these things is, a di is the uh, diagonal, or maybe there's a bit of a difference in the convention of the thickness, but I just wanted to mention that you could do these very kind of strange effects uh, when you combine these uh, two things together. Um, so there you go. You now know how to make uh, the node. This is basically the final product. Uh, it works in Eevee. Uh, let me show you that it works in cycles. It really does. Um, and it doesn't require freestyle or anything like this. So that is the tutorial. Uh, you could do whatever you want with this node. You can uh, make it uh, do different things that isn't as boring as a wireframe. You can make it glow. Uh, you can do rough and edges, whatever, like there's dirt on the uh, borders and stuff like that. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and want to support uh, this channel and really the CG Matter channel, the best way to do that is via Patreon. I really appreciate anybody who has the means and wants to do that. Uh, there are benefits. You can go look at what those are. However, if you want to support this uh, free tutorial Blunder Channel YouTube situation, that is the uh, most helpful thing uh, that you can do. So I really appreciate it, uh, anybody who wants to do that. But I think that's going to be the end of the plug there because that is the only plug I have. I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. I think it was a, this was a fun one to record. So... I hope you learned something, maybe you learned a bit of logic about shading, UVs, and all this. And yeah, I've been CG Matter Default Cube. You've been you. That's that's the show. Thanks for watching.